Springtime is one of my favorite seasons to capture beautiful landscape photography of wildflowers. It can add so much color and texture to a scene and oftentimes make the perfect foreground element. But the only problem, and I'm sure you've encountered this before, is wind. Shooting wildflowers in the wind can be very tricky and lead to some less than desirable results. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my absolute favorite technique for capturing flowers in the wind, as well as share some other tips that'll help you to shoot better springtime photography. I really hope you enjoy the video. Check this out. Beautiful, beautiful lupin flower. It's really nice kind of purple color to them. And I think these flowers are gonna be the perfect foreground to accentuate those dramatic peaks. And as I'm talking, I see some glow starting in the sky. So we may get lucky with a good sunset, sunrise, sunset. I'm a little, only got about four or five hours of sleep last night, so I'm not fully there yet, but I think I'll wake up more once this light starts. All right, this little section right here is quite nice. Let me show you what this looks like real quick. So here is what it looks like, and, and I like the flowers to just kind of either frame what I'm shooting in the distance or lead you up to what I'm shooting in the distance. So in this case, with a horizontal shot, I'm kind of framing the mountain and you get this nice symmetry. But if I go ahead and I flip my camera vertically, this area right here is really kind of cluttered. And so I need to sort of work on this section and really fill up that area with some, you know, flowers that are sort of pushing into the camera. So that's kind of what I need to work on here. I, you know, the mountain is great. The light is going to be amazing. Uh, it's just all about finding that, that foreground pattern that's going to work. And when it comes to finding foregrounds, I mean, it's all about moving. So I just got to move around these fields and find the exact spot that catches my eye. Wow, this is incredible. I've got some beautiful dappled light on the mountain right now. Clouds are looking nice. They're filling out the sky with a little bit of texture, just enough to give interest. Yeah, so check this out. At 16 by nine, I'm cropping a little bit of the sky. I'm trying a horizontal here, and then I'm gonna switch to a vertical, kind of like what I showed you before. I really like this arrangement of the flowers, though. They're a little bit thicker, so you don't get those gaps in between. It's actually a ladybug on top of the flower. I don't know if that's gonna show up in my picture. As far as settings go, this is a little bit of a tricky one. So, it's windy, which is kind of unfortunate for wildflower photography, but I've rarely gotten the chance to shoot wildflowers without wind. There are kind of two methods that I use for this type of photography when it's windy. The first is to switch to F16 and try and pull back just enough to where you can get the flowers in focus and the background in focus. Now, if that's not achievable, I will keep it on F16, shoot one image for the foreground and flowers, and then one image for the background. And there's no way I'm gonna get all of that in focus in one shot, even at F16. So you gotta pull back a little bit. And right about here is fine. And when it's windy also, especially at sunrise, make sure your shutter speed is high enough to account for that wind so you don't get the flowers all blurry. So let's go ahead and do F16 here. ISO 500, and I'm doing one one hundredth of a second. So this image right here ended up being one of my favorites of the morning, and I felt like that horizontal composition was working a lot better for the scene. I think part of that was getting the hill on the right side, which balanced out the mountains on the left to create a bit more symmetry. I also felt like the arrangement of flowers here was a lot cleaner than the previous photo. So with these single exposures at f16, a lot of people ask me, well, where do I focus? Now oftentimes you can focus on the background to get everything pretty sharp, but if you notice the foreground is getting a little 
soft when you focus on the background, you can use the hyperfocal distance to get everything a little bit more in focus. What that means is rather than focus at infinity, you're going to focus in between infinity and the foreground, allowing more of the image to be in focus. There are math equations you can use to find the exact hyperfocal distance in field, but I found these to be pretty impractical when you're actually out there shooting. So let me share with you two very simple ways of focusing. The first is to calculate the distance between your lens and the nearest thing that you want to be in focus, and then set your focus to double that distance. For example, if these flowers are about three feet away, then I'll try and focus at about six feet away. Since these are very rough estimates, make sure to always check the back of your camera after you take the photo and zoom into 10x to make sure that you have everything you want sharp. Another method, which isn't quite hyperfocal distance but still works pretty well, is the live view technique. For this, you'll need live view that has accurate depth of field preview, which most new mirrorless cameras have. Switch your camera to manual focus, zoom in to 10x on the background, and then slowly twist your focus towards infinity. You'll notice that the background should get sharp before you hit infinity, and this should give you a bit more focus range in your foreground. Before shooting this moment, I did capture the first light on Mount Whitney with my telephoto lens, and here's how that turned out. Even though the main goal of the shoot was wildflowers, I can never help myself when I find a good telephoto scene. And so when you're fixated on something, just make sure to look around every once in a while and see what other options are available. Oh my god, and look at the light coming through. I got a duck. <laughs> my head is, my shadow is in the frame. Oh, that is so nice. Well, that was pretty spectacular. It was quite amazing just seeing the, the dappled light on the peaks and the clouds up above. But one of the biggest challenges of the shoot that I didn't even think of was that this composition faces directly opposite to the sun rising. So as soon as that sun gets above the mountain out there in the distance, you see your shadow in all of these lupins. I tried a few different techniques like one was seeing if I could find some lupin bushes that were a little taller to hide my shadow. And then I also did this where you can get low and get the camera high. I, I really don't know how successful those images are going to be. And yeah, hoping for some really interesting light in the next few days. And yeah, we'll see what else we can find. All right, well, I didn't realize how many mosquito friends I was making on that shoot, but the one sticking to my face that entire segment definitely left a lasting impression. Later that day, I decided to wander back to this field at sunset. This time, there were some gorgeous storm clouds in the sky, but none of them were directly above the mountain. So I decided to turn around and shoot the flowers in the opposite direction. And here's what I captured. As usual, it was really windy, so I wasn't able to focus stack any of these, so instead I just shot them at f16 and made sure that the flowers in the foreground were sharp. The next day I decided to explore another lupin field with my friend Josh Cripps, and this one had some different varieties of colors, and we also had some really dramatic storms to work with. Oh my gosh, amazing. Check this out. Got the beautiful lupin down here, Lone Pine Peak. If I angle the camera this way, you can see Mount Whitney out there in the distance. We've got this beautiful stormy light to work with. It's very overwhelming because it looks beautiful everywhere and I've just been bouncing around these flowers trying to find the right patch to really align with, with the background. What I really like about this patch in here though is you can see right in here, there are some white flowers amongst some of the kind of purple violet flowers. And I really liked that white patch to kind of break up some of the colors and the tonalities. 
So one of the toughest parts about shooting wildflowers like this is in the spring months, at least here in California, it gets so windy. <laughs> I haven't had a day here of just still calmness and that makes it really, really tricky to focus stack images to take those different focal points because then when you try and blend them later on, since those flowers are moving, the programs tend to have a tough time trying to align the flowers and then you might have to do it manually, which is an absolute nightmare. So this was a pretty big mistake I made last year, if you remember my wildflower video from last season. I did an elaborate focus stack in the wind with exposure blending and even did a panorama. And although I was happy with this final result, it took hours and hours to finally stack and stitch this image properly. So learning my lesson this time, I decided to keep it a lot more simple for these windy conditions. And overall, it made processing the images from the shoot a lot more enjoyable. We got my buddy Josh Cripps right there, who you might remember from one of my Death Valley videos, the legendary Josh Cripps in the wild. And right behind him is staggeringly beautiful storm clouds. So here's those white lupin leading up to the mountain range in the distance, and I felt like the color and tonality variety here in the flowers worked really well to add some extra interest to the scene. Here's another image a bit tighter on Mount Whitney with the flowers in the foreground and that beautiful stormy light. I would have loved to try an even closer shot of Mount Whitney and the flowers. That would have required so much focus stacking. Luckily for this one, I was able to get everything sharp by doing two images, one for the flowers and focus in the foreground and then one for the background. After shooting this, I turned around and shot flowers in the opposite direction and I ended up shooting one of my favorite photos of the trip. And here it is. This ended up being a two photograph panorama, one for the sky and then one for the flowers down below. The sky here was absolutely incredible and I felt like everything came together for this image. The X shape to the composition, the colors, the textures, and even though it doesn't include the mountain range in the background, I was just really happy with the way this one came out. On my trip, I also wandered around the Alabama Hills area, and then I found this. So here's a photo of a prickly pear cactus bloom in front of this beautiful rock spire. Luckily, since this cactus was really solid, I was able to do a four image focus stack for this one and get everything really nice and sharp. So when you're out there capturing wildflowers, just remember, regardless of the conditions, there's always something you can do to get the shot. And even though I would have loved to get some calm conditions, get a little bit closer to the flowers and do more focus stacking, I think everything is a give and take here because some of those windy, dramatic conditions ended up producing spectacular light to work with. If you're having a bit of trouble shooting flowers, use your hyperfocal distance at f16 to get everything sharp, make sure you have a fast enough shutter speed to combat the wind, and then if that doesn't work, try taking two images, one for the background and one for the flowers, and blend those together in post. With that, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.